If you're a diehard CG Cookie fan, you probably already know how important creating a concept is before you actually start working in 3D. But today, I'm going to show you a different way to create concepts, using a method I like to call Grease Pencil Pre-Visualization. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. You can do some pretty crazy things with a grease pencil in Blender, whether it's just adding some notes to the note editor so you can keep track of things, or, you know, creating an entire short film just like the Blender Foundation did with Hero. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite applications, which is pre-visualization, otherwise known as previs, because pre-visualization is kind of a mouthful. Anyway, let's start things off today by figuring out how the grease pencil works. I'm going to go ahead and just start up a new Blender file here. So for once, I'm actually just going to leave this uh, scene as is. I'm not going to delete anything in the startup scene. We'll just let it chill how it is. So the first thing that we need to know in order to access the grease pencil is to open up this tool panel and come down to the grease pencil tab. In here, we'll have all of our basic drawing tools that allow us to choose like where strokes go and how strokes are made and what shapes the strokes might have. Additionally, we have more information over here in this menu by pressing uh, that can be accessed by pressing N. Um, where we can create new grease pencils and grease pencil layers, as well as individual colors for our grease pencil. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm actually going to shrink these menus down just a tiny bit, um, because I still want to have a nice working space here. So, the first thing you should know about the grease pencil is to draw. You come up here on the left and you just click draw. And it gives you this little tool, you can see my cursor changed here, and we can just kind of doodle. Draw whatever we want. And if we rotate around it, you can see that it is drawn in 3D space. Now, by doing so, you can also see that we had a few different things added over here. We now have, under our grease pencil colors, the ability to change the color. So this is one color that we currently have. So let's say I wanted to make this stroke green. So we can make that stroke a very brilliant green. Um, and as long as this layer is selected and we continue drawing, it will always be green. Now, there are some cases in which, you know, you want to draw with more than one color, and to do that, all you need to do is click plus. You can see that we now have color 001, which if you'd like to name, you can. And let's just make this one pure red. And then we'll click draw. And now, you can see that this one is red. And the nice thing about this is you can actually change the colors of the strokes after they've already been made, as you saw what I just did with the green there. So if I didn't want this stroke to be red, instead I could turn it to blue. If I didn't want the two strokes that I made with the green color to be green, I could change them to be purple, just like that. Perfect, so let's look at some of the other features. For one, I will always like to have continuous drawing enabled. This will allow you to, you know, scribble, and then when you leave or pick the mouse up, you can actually continue scribbling um, and doing whatever you want, because that's kind of nice. Uh, that way you don't have to come up here and click draw every single time you want to draw a line segment. Uh, and additionally, we can look at these uh, stroke placement things. And I'm going to really quick delete these two colors here. Stroke placement kind of decides where in 3D space your uh, drawing is going to appear. So setting this to view will basically draw on your screen exactly like where it is. And you can see as I rotate around, no matter where I am, that line and doodle stays exactly where it is. It's not really in 3D space. It's more of like plastered on the lens of the invisible 3D camera. Uh, so that's what view does. The next thing is cursor. And cursor basically uh, creates an imaginary plane at the, uh, at the origin, or sorry, not at the origin, at the 3D cursor. So you can see if I draw a line here, it's now on that imaginary plane. And if I come over here and draw another thing, it's still on that imaginary plane, just at a different angle. So you can kind of create a whole set of different things, but you can see that all of them for the most part intersect there at that cursor. The next thing we have is the ability to draw on the surface of objects. So now if I draw on this cube and say we just want to draw a little smiley face on here, just like that, you can see that it's plastered on the surface of the cube. And if I were to draw something like, uh, I don't know, we'll draw another smiley face, except we'll draw it like this, right? You'll notice it gets kind of weird and goofy. Uh, that's because it's being projected onto the surface. So it looks fine from this angle because that's the angle we drew it from. Uh, but from other angles, you can see that it is projected onto that surface. So we'll get rid of that once more. And the last ability we have is to draw things on top of the stroke. So 
Your first line, if there is nothing for it to base off of, it will be based upon the plane um, around the 3D cursor. But after that, you can draw off of the existing stroke, just like that. And you don't have to start on the stroke. You can cross it and it'll just automatically adapt. But this is really helpful for drawing like actual pictures and stuff um, because then it'll be constantly stuck to other strokes that you've already created, therefore keeping everything in the same general plane. And the last option we have here is the ability to only cause that with the endpoints. So say um, we have our cube again here and we'll change this back to surface and get rid of our weird doodle here. Uh, and I would were to click draw and I were to click here and I were to make a big old loop and bring it back. You can see that only the endpoints are actually on the edge. The rest was oriented to the angle that the camera was facing. Uh, so that's another neat feature. That way you can avoid the weird projection because if I were to turn that off now and do more or less the same thing, you can see that it does get projected. But when we have only endpoints enabled, it's only the point where you first click and where you release that click. Or if you have a drawing tablet, it's where you put the pen down and pick it up. And there you have it. That is all the technical knowledge that you need to have in order to start using the grease pencil for previs. So what is previs? I like to view previs as a hybrid of concept art and 3D modeling, kind of happening at the same time. All right, so I just went ahead and I opened up this Blender project that I worked on a while ago. I called it Windswept Canyon, I believe. And as you can see, it is indeed a Windswept Canyon. Um, looks like something that might be a slot canyon that you'd find in Nevada or something, except it's more cave-like, I guess. Um, either way, uh, this was more or less the final render that you're seeing right here. Um, but I didn't really dig this render too much because I don't feel like it really had any story elements. And while I was producing this episode, I thought, I bet I could add in some sort of story element or preview a story element with the grease pencil. So earlier, I went through that and I did exactly that. And as you can see here, here is a little climber climbing on a rope up and out of the cave. And this is just drawn in with the grease pencil. Now, say I wanted to actually add this, I could go in and I could position the climber exactly where this guy is, right in that same exact position. But the grease pencil allows me to put that in there beforehand so I can check it out and decide whether or not I like it. And actually, I did decide one thing. I do like that it's in there and I do like that it gives some sort of focus other than the entrance of the cavern. But I thought it would be even cooler if I moved this guy over so he was in front of the cavern. And that's not something that you'd really think about um, unless you actually did the grease pencil pre-visualization first and figure that out. So doing something like this can really help to accelerate your workflow. That way you're not sitting there modeling or positioning things in places that you'll find out don't really look good. Oh, and while we're here, a little extra tidbit of information. The uh, Blender 2.8 release is actually really, really, really capitalizing on grease pencil tools. So the grease pencil right now does seem kind of primitive, but in 2.8 it is beautiful. It is a beautiful thing. So that is one of my favorite tricks with the grease pencil in Blender. Do you guys know of any awesome grease pencil tricks that can help save people time or help them imagine what their scene's going to be before it's even finished? If you do, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to see them and everybody else would as well. If you guys are enjoying these weekly tutorials and you want to see more awesome Blender educational content, head over to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription. There are tons and tons of courses and videos available on the site for you to follow so you can turn yourself into a Blender genius. Thank <laughs> you.